Loaded with a king's ransom of gold, silver and gems for her maiden voyage to Java, the Batavia struck Morning Reef on the 4th of June in 1629. The wreck site of the Batavia is still visible after more than 370 years of consistent pounding and erosion from the elements. Diving on the Batavia has been a very important part of my life. Swimming around the wreck site, there are sort of, have always been only sort of three major items. There was the ballast, the huge heap of 32 tonnes of stone, which has been raised and is now in the Geraldton Museum. There are anchors and cannons, so these are the items that survive on a wreck site. Batavia probably had a mixture of coins, but they only left behind two chests, one scattered by the drunken crew and the second one wedged under an anchor and cannon. They were virtually standard uh, ounces of silver and uh, very common in those days. Forty people drowned trying to get ashore to the Coral Islands soon after the Batavia ran aground. A further 200 survivors were taken ashore by longboat to the nearest and largest island, Beacon Island, then called Batavia's graveyard. Without food, water or shelter, a further 20 people died from illness or from drinking seawater. Most of the survivors were later murdered by the undermerchant of the Batavia, Geronimus Cornelius, and his gang of bloodthirsty mutineers. A total of 125 men, women and children were slaughtered on the tiny islands. Cornelius and his men were finally overpowered by Weber Hayes and the soldiers on the West Wallaby. A rescue boat, the Sardam, was sent from Java to collect any valuables and any survivors left on the islands. Cornelius was tried by court and was sentenced to death. He had both hands chopped off with a chisel and hammer and was hung on the newly constructed gallows on Long Island. Six of his gang of mutineers were also hung on Long Island, three of which had their right hands chopped off. <laughs>